All right, so admittedly, I'm making this video the very next day after Oakland just destroyed pretty much everyone's March Madness bracket by taking out Kentucky in the round of 64. So this video, it may just wreak a recency bias, but honestly, I think it's better that way, y'all, because we have got to talk about, man, we've got to discuss the situation of this man, DJ Wagner, because now that the season is really over, like there's nothing else that can be done about this man's freshman year. We can all see, no one else can be in denial as far as what he's shown us or, or as far as things improving. Now listen, again, I'm no DJ Wagner hater, but we gotta call a spade a spade. Man, yesterday, in a total of 17 minutes, the man dropped zero points on 0 for 5 shooting from the field and 0 for 4 shooting from 3. Listen man, what is that? I remind everyone, and like I cannot be the only guy that feels bamboozled. At the time that this man committed to Kentucky, right, he was the number one overall prospect in the nation. The number one overall, and they don't just hand that out to anyone. Promises were made to this man that he would be, guar that he would be guaranteed a spot in the starting lineup, regardless of how great or poorly he was playing. And as we've seen during the actual season, that remained consistent. I'm talking about, listen, I know we're going to get to Robert Dillingham later. He didn't play well yesterday either. But for the majority of the season, man, what? Robert Dillingham? was cooking teams putting his offensive abilities on display and they still stuck him on the bench in that sixth man role this is because of dj wagner come on y'all so yeah man in this video we're just going to talk about the dj wagner situation overall should he declare for the 2024 nba draft why why not his future his potential yeah, man. So, yeah, go ahead and let me know. What do you think of Kentucky, John Calipari, and what you witnessed yesterday if you keep up with March Madness or just 2024 draft prospects? And yeah, man, really quick before I go any further. What's up, YouTube? Plug Speaks back within the video. If you're new, first of all, welcome. Go ahead and sub. Also, like the video if you enjoy. They upload quality basketball content, and we are on the ground of 5K, so I'd most definitely appreciate it. But back to the video. Now, before I really just dive into everything as far as DJ Wagner, his abilities, and just his season overall, I gotta make sure we all on the same page as far as the significance behind the DJ Wagner hype. Because, y'all, this cannot be ignored. This is a big reason why it's just so disappointing that DJ Wagner's season turned out how it did. Listen, DJ Wagner's father is Dewan Wagner. Now, Dewan Wagner played under Coach Calipari back when he was at Memphis, you know, Memphis basketball. It was a thing back then. The man was averaging 21 points on 41% shooting, just hooping and going crazy under who other than John Calipari. So as y'all can see, the connection right there because John Calipari, he spent some time at Memphis. I think the last significant player he coached was Derrick Rose before he officially went to Kentucky and built his reputation up. I know that's kind of crazy to say now considering the man's reputation is kind of going down the drain, but you got to listen to me in saying when he first went to Kentucky, his reputation was on the rise. But anyway, I, wanna, I don't want to give too much of a history lesson. Man, the main point here is that Dewan Wagner wanted for his son exactly what he experienced at Memphis under John Calipari, which was great development and just a great overall experience leading to him being one and done and going to the NBA. This was the vision and the goal. Pretty much the everything for DJ. I mean, his father literally laid out the blueprint. Play well under John Calipari party and you will go to the nba i mean it got to the point that even though dj wagner was the number one overall prospect in high school no other d1 schools like unc you know those top tier duke villanova ucla nobody else even wasted their recruiting efforts and gave him offers because dj wagner to kentucky nation was a lock but sadly enough as we can all see you know especially sadly for our march madness brackets things did not pan out now again i'm not saying just to say that you know dj wagner his nba chances are done i'm not saying he can't come back to kentucky and then ball out next season i'm talking about things in their present time so please don't come back to this video like hey man you was hating on dj wagner nobody's doing that but we gotta call a spade a spade listen in the 29 games this man played this season he put up an average of 10 points three assists and two rebounds on 40 percent shooting from the field and 29% shooting from three. Y'all, this was in 26 minutes per game, starting pretty much every game. I mean, come on now, do with this information what you will, because I can literally put up Robert Dillingham stats on the screen, and you, you will see that this man produced more in less minutes. And yet, my boy, he never got an opportunity to just start for the team and show what he could do with starter minutes. 
I understand that, hey, man, he could come in off the bench, you know, provide that spark that Coach Calipari just swears the team needs, but I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. You've got to at least test the waters and give Robert Dillingham a chance to start, especially if this man, DJ Wagner, is doing what he's doing. I mean, at this point, let me just put a good chunk of DJ Wagner's game log on the screen because as you're going to see right here, the man did not have terrible games every time. Like, he had some games where he shot 6 for 7 from the field, 4 threes, 19 points. Other games where he may have shot 1 for 6 from the field, dropped 2 points. Other games where he shot 8 for 12 from the field, 18 points. It's just a level of inconsistency. Like, bro, you just cannot be doing that when the team practically lives and dies by you. And when I say that, I mean the fact that his starting position was so concrete and so nailed in stone. I mean, what else can you say when somebody does something like shoot 2 for 10 and drop 4 points in 30 minutes versus South Carolina? I mean, we just seen South Carolina got bounced out in March Madness as well. That's not a crazy team. The man shot 2 for 10. This is not this is not what we expected to see from somebody that's a five-star recruit. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, as I end off this video, let me just talk about the Oakland game in general because bro, I begin on DJ Wagner a lot, but the Oakland loss is on everybody. From John Calipari to Rob Dillingham to Reed Shepard, bro, everyone everyone and i'm especially salty because i had them boys in my final four now listen i'm never gonna make that mistake again and i'm not even mad at y'all if y'all clown me for that but it's like y'all gotta understand when you have that much talent and you play well for a good majority of the season you make a believer in people especially when you're royalty like kentucky like i don't know bro maybe the players just forgot who they play for Kentucky is royalty. I know they've been losing lately, but at the end of the day, this team is royalty. Their history is too profound as far as who they bring in and who they deliver to the NBA as far as top tier talent. Like, come on now, Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox, they weren't doing this. I think they lost in the, in the Elite Eight. You know, Anthony Davis, he led them to the chip. You know, John Wall, I think he made the Final Four. Them boys usually win and produce good seasons, but I don't know, man. I guess, I guess these boys, they done forgot. But anyway, I'm not going to drag this video out too long. I swear, I'm repeating the same things at this point. Y'all let me know what you think of DJ Wagner and should he declare for the 2024 NBA draft. Why or why not? Me personally, I do believe he would still get drafted just off the love for Kentucky. I mean, we see it. We see it every year. I think BJ Boston, even he got drafted the year he was putting up bricks. Kentucky, I mean, that's why they choose this school. It's a gift and a curse, clearly. But anyway, that's about it, man. I appreciate y'all watching as always. Let me know if your bracket has been busted because mine's done for it. But yeah, man, I'll see y'all in the next one, and I'm out.